Good morning. Actually, I think it's a little bit closer to afternoon. So, for my, uh, got this Nobler control line kit from my father last night, actually. It's one of the, it's actually an original top plate kit from, I don't know, probably the 60s or so. Maybe, yeah, the last Nationals date on there is 66, so it's a good chance it was after that. But anyway, over the next couple of weeks or maybe in months, I don't know exactly how long that this one's going to take, um, I'm up. I'm gonna put this together and I mean I'm not gonna silk span it and stuff I'm just gonna monocoat but the uh, I've got a OS 35 FP which isn't it's really not period correct but I think it might be a pretty good engine for this plane uh, I haven't even really pulled this apart this kit out and taken a good look at it yet so, that's kind of a, it's going to be interesting. It's got, you know, built up fuselage. Um, it's pretty in depth for a control line. The only thing that I don't see with this kit, and I think it's supposed to have it, is the, uh, is the, cockpit looks like it might be missing um, I think they came with a with like a little plastic cap that goes over there I don't know if you can see that but I think it's supposed to be a little clear plastic cap which is fine by me I can do it and uh oh wait a minute here's something oh wow okay so it does have it, but it's just not, um, it's not like a hard plastic thing. It's just a little, hmm, a little thin plastic deal. Okay. This even comes with, uh, old hinge material for doing cloth hinges, which I have done in the past, but I've also had that cost me, as you see. So these control rods are a little rusted up. I mean, it's not too bad though. I mean, if you consider how how old the kit is, uh, it's in pretty good shape. That's <laughs> funny. It says for those who insist on the very best. <laughs> I don't know, I get a kick out of some of that old stuff, but, alright, um, I'm going to continue to kind of unbox this and figure out if I'm going to do the wing first, which is usually how I do it, and, um, get started. I found out that the, uh, the place where I usually go get my glue and stuff no longer carries that kind of glue, so I'm going to have to order it either all offline because there isn't a hobby shop down here in southern Georgia. Now I am going up to the northern side this week. Maybe I might stop in there and find a place, but I don't usually have a lot of time for messing around when I'm up there, but I'll give it a try. Alright, we're into my first slight problem. As you can see, um, if I go over here, it's pretty much close to the edge. I bring it over. All right, so I'm about uh, three inches over the edge of my table. Um, now I do have another piece of drywall, and I can go get a piece of you know plywood or something that's bigger than the table and put it down, and then put another piece of drywall on top of that. But what I'm going to try first is I'm going to try to cut out the actual wing from the plans. So it's a little bit easier to work with. And then I'm going to try to see about like setting it on here like caddy corner. And see if that gives me an extra, some extra space. Um, so far everything looks pretty simple. Um, as far as, you know, when I pulled it all apart and looked at it. There's um, directions on the plans 
four building uh, fuel tank. I don't believe the kit came with the actual um, components to build it with, but you can get um, you can get this stuff from like Brodak or somebody like that. Or you could just probably, I would guess, you could probably just order a nobler tank at this point. But, alright, uh, I'm going to cut that out and get back to you in a minute. Alright, as you can see, I've cut out all the ribs. The, uh, these holes here, um... They're actually meant for this side of the airplane because you have lead outs that run through. But because there's perforated for both sides, I cut them out or knocked them out for both sides. You can see this wing's a little bit shorter and as such, uh, rib 11 and 12 are real close together. Uh, see, this side ends up flying towards the uh, center of the circle and it has a lead outs in it. Um, it's just the way that these things are designed. Now, keep in mind when you're cutting these out, some of these are not going to be, or when you're punching these out, some of these are not going to be punched all the way through when you're using an old kit. The laser cut kits, I think, pretty much would take care of this, but with these older kits, and this one seems to be really good, uh, I've got another kit that I've, I've been working on for a while that it's terrible. This one's pretty good, but you still have hard spots in the balsa, uh, relative hard spots, I guess, and... It isn't punched through all the way. Just try to make sure that when you are pushing the piece through, that you do so in a way that it pulls the uh, the extra off onto the waist. I'm trying to give you a good example of that, but I don't think I have one in here. Um, keep these things. You never know what they're going to be used for. You can use them for uh, spacing up your ribs to to get them up. You know, in the area in the position that you want it to be into when you're when you're gluing one thing or another and I uh, think that's about it for now all right let me see if I can show this to you here in a way that possibly hopefully you can see here well that's not a uh, it's not focusing all that well but anyway this is my first area, there you go, now you can see it. My first area where I can see that there's actually an issue. And you see this gap here between this line and the edge. And it's exaggerated here because this is actually this piece of the trailing edge a little bit bigger. So this was, the next step was to pin the trailing edge. That's what you got to do when you're doing something like this is really pay attention throughout this, the entire process to make sure that you don't have any mistakes in the way that it's being built. You can't put this thing together like a plastic model. So what I'm going to do is take you these little sticks here and glue them to that edge with some CA and then kind of sand them all out until the whole thing is exactly on the line like it's supposed to be. Now that might be a little bit over the top for some guys. Um, you might be able to fill that with epoxy if you wanted to, but uh, it's really not my method. The other thing to look at here, you can see how high the uh, spar stands up from the ribs. Now I've looked at the plans and it doesn't appear that the top of the rib, uh, what do they call that? Um, here I'll show you. Uh, these cap strips, they say to glue on here. You know, actually, it might only go to that spar. And in which case, it needs to have that little bit of a lip. Okay. So then I just need to make sure that it's level on the bottom. And then I got a pretty uniform lip across the top. But that's what I'm talking about, about, you know, making sure that everything is how it's supposed to be uh, out of the box. And then make any kind of changes you can while it's still apart. Now, I'm not going to be gluing any of this together. For a while um, but in the meantime I am going to go through and you know trying to fit everything and make sure it's all lining up how I want it all right uh, just ran into a slight problem the directions aren't real clear let me see if I can get and show you this um, it is a little hard to see 
Especially when I'm in the light. But, anyway. It is not very clear. Whether the bell crank platform is supposed to be up or down. And the reason why I say that is if you look at here, you see that it's got a, a long cutout and then a short. So then if you look at the directions, see, I think the short would be down below. However, if you build the wing that way, then the bell crank will be facing towards the bottom. Where if you look in the in other directions, in other areas, it shows the bell crank facing up. In addition, it also shows the notch for the ribs being at the bottom. Mine were at the top. So, what I'm having to do is having to flip the spars left to right. And what this will do is, this will put the platform for the bell crank at the bottom which will line the bell crank up here up top and then when you bring the fuselage in the fuselage will sit you know like this then you have the short side of the wing and the long side of the wing but before I noticed it I had already cut the outside spar and that is one of those, you know, measure twice, uh, cut once kind of ordeals. But it's not a bad, big deal because I, I did a good job cutting it. So a little bit of CA will put it back together and probably never even notice it. And then I'll just have to cut that side. But I think I'm going to wait until uh, I get a little bit further and, and, and maybe it becomes a little bit more apparent whether or not uh, I'm correct and how I view the plans are saying to go it is it is really not clear um maybe a little bit more of an experienced builder would have known this off this you know off the uh get that you know it's supposed to be built a certain way but for me it wasn't a hundred percent clear and um so that was the first little mistake uh i don't know if you can tell here where i put in that little edge on uh the trailing edge so that's done and kind of sanded out and you won't tell that once it's uh once it's cleaned up and the uh the top part of the trailing edge comes in to meet so all right i just thought i'd share that with you just kind of a little gaff on my part um i'm sure there's going to be plenty of them thanks